Hey class, this is me, Mr. Wee. Um, I'm going to be here to kind of go over some stuff from 1.5. It's number 50 on 1.5, technically. Um, but I'm going to go over like four different review problems for properties of logs. So you can kind of write these down. Right now, I left, I think, a little too much space. But the first one is four times uh, the natural log of square root of e to the x power. Um, is equal to 26, and you have to solve for x. Here is x minus log of 100 is equal to the natural log of e to the third power. And then down here is log base x. Ooh, that looks pretty tough. Of 7x minus 10 is equal to 2. That's interesting. That's not actually equal to a variable. So that should give you a clue on how to fix that or how to work with that. And this over here is 2 log base 3x minus log base 3x minus 2 is equal to 2. Okay, you're going to have to solve for x on all of these. Okay, so let's kind of dissect each one really quick using our handout that I have in class, um, the product rule, quotient rule, power rule, and change base formula. You can pause and write those down, or you can just look at your handout that you have right here. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and attack this one by one. So I would just deal with uh, what you have here by first dealing or first isolating the natural log. Anything with logs or logarithms, I don't like the fact that it has a weird number coefficient in the front. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4. That's my first step. Okay. And then I'm going to simplify this down. I know these are both divisible by 2, 26 and 4. So I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 4, and that's going to be 13 divided by 2. And I have the natural log of square root of e to the x there. Okay. Now, one thing to note is the square root here. This isn't actually from the logarithms um, properties, but if you have a square root, it's the same thing as saying the natural log of e to the one half power, is it not? Okay. And you had the x there in the beginning, so let's rewrite it in that way. Because you will now get to end up using a logarithmic property that you know. And one of the logarithmic properties is the power rule. So if you have a logarithm base x with some kind of exponent, that exponent that was in here, as long as you're taking the logarithm of it, you could take that uh, y component to the front, to the outside. So let's go ahead and do that. 1 half x is now going to go to the front. So it's going to be 1 half x times the natural log of e. And if we know anything about that, that's just going to be 1. So this is all being multiplied together is equal to 3, 13 over 2. This is going to cancel out, basically. So it's going to have 1 half x is equal to 13 over 2. And if you notice, if I just want to get rid of the half here, I just multiply both sides by 2. Whatever I do to one side, i got to do the other. And there you go. x is equal to 13. Simple as that. Not too shabby. OK, let's go on to the second one. Uh, one one thing to note, if your log does not have a base there, that implies that your base is actually going to be log base 10 of 100 is equal to the natural log of, oh, let's do the power rule here. So the power rule, power rule basically says again that the exponent, if you're taking the log of a base with an exponent, that exponent can actually drop to the front. So it's going to be equivalent to the same thing. It's going to be 3 times log base e of e. And if you don't remember logarithms, just quick review. If you're taking the log of 10 equals 100 to get an x, basically you're asking me, you're, I'm asking, what is the exponent going to be equal to to make 10, 10 to the power of whatever exponent equal to 100? Well, that's really simple. It's just 2. So it's going to be x minus 2 is equal to 3 times 1 which is basically uh, x minus 2 is equal to 3. Add 2 to both sides, and you get x equals 5. OK, there you go. Let's go down here. This looks really confusing. It's like, how do I do this if this isn't going to be equal to some kind of exponent or something? Um, but if you think about the logic here and that the base is x, that's really scary. Remember, I told you just as a review, let's do a quick review again. The log base of 10 to 100, my example was, is equal to x. That was the same thing as asking 10 times the power of x is equal to 100. What exponent would that have to be? Well, that would be 2. Okay. 
basically. This, however, is kind of written in the way where it's like, okay, I was given the exponent 2, so that means x to the power of 2 is then going to be equal to 7x plus 10. Okay? And we rewrite it, basically, because that's what this is basically telling me. So let's actually... Uh, uh, let's move both of these guys over here. So minus 7x, minus 7x, and this is x squared minus 7x is equal to 10. And then I subtract 10 from both sides. And now I have a polynomial problem where I can factor out this polynomial into two binomials. Does, it, does this seem kind of familiar here? Sorry, this is plus 10. Where, I don't know if you've ever seen a diamond problem here, but... Basically, you're trying to figure out, I think, a, what is it? I think it's a A and C such that A times, it has to be equal to A times C and A plus C. I think where, like, say A and C, I think, are, let's see, am I doing this right? Or I, think, I think it's B and C. Is it B and C? Where this is your A, this is your B, and this is your C. I don't think I'm doing this quite right, am I? Yeah. Well, anyways, I'm not. Gonna, I'm, I think I'm getting ahead of myself, and I don't quite remember so what that method was. But I just know that this factors out into x minus five and x minus two because those are two numbers that can multiply to get me ten, positive ten, but add up to negative seven. Okay. So at this point, you need to solve what x is going to be equal to. x is equal to either positive 5 or positive 2. Okay. Final question is going to be over here. And we're kind of going to kind of going to go backwards. Because I noticed that these are both uh, the same base here, 3 and 3, um, I'm going to kind of reverse and kind of make this into a... Uh, I'm going to actually kind of use our properties going backwards backwards and you're going to see what it is. I'm going to rewrite these. So this is now going to be log base. I'm going to condense these basically into log base 3x squared minus log base 3x minus 2 is equal to 2. And I'm going to reverse order this by using one of the properties here. I'm going to use the quotient rule. The quotient rule basically says if I have two logs with the same base being subtracted from each other, it's the same thing as saying this guy and this guy that I'm taking the logarithm of are basically going to be condensed to a fraction with this being over y. So this is going to be log base 3. This is being this uh, this guy is being subtracted from x squared. So we're, what's going to be how it's going to be written is x squared over x minus 2 is equal to 2. And then you're like, what do I have here? Well, I can actually, I can also say that 3 squared is going to be equal to x squared over x minus 2. Sort of in a similar way that I kind of set this up from here. I, this was basically telling me that x squared is equal, x squared is equal to 7x minus 10. Okay. Well, this basically here is saying that 3 squared is equal to x squared over x minus 2. Okay. So that's going to be 9 is equal to Let's see, x squared uh, over x minus 2. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by x minus 2. So that's going to be 9 times x minus 2 is equal to x squared. Okay. And then let's distribute that 9 here and here. So it's going to be 9x minus 18 is equal to x squared. Okay. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Let's see if I have a... I, I gotta find another piece of paper really quick. I think Mr. Wee's out of paper. Oh no, I got, I got. Nope. Yep. Let's see. But, yeah, I got another piece of paper right here. So let's kind of continue off of what we have here to here. So it's nine minus eighteen is equal to x squared. Okay. So let's set this equal equal to zero by uh, what was it nine x? I'm sorry, nine x. So let's subtract the nine x from both sides. So you have minus 18 is equal to x squared minus 9x. You add 18 to both sides. You have 0 is equal to x squared minus 9x plus 18. And then you factor this out into two binomials. I know that to be, 
think it's six and three, minus six and minus three, because I know that both these numbers will um, multiply up to 18, but they will also add up to minus nine. So then you know that x is equal to six and three. There you go. Okay, guys, that's the, the end of this. So you guys can stop here. This was an optional video for you guys to review some logarithmic properties. Okay, guys, you guys have a great day. I'm going to go ahead and stop this video now. Bye.